Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Back to the Basics, a review of what the Bible teaches about the Christian faith. If you need to download a, an outline of this presentation, uh, please do so from our website at Faith Community Lutheran Church in Las Vegas. This episode of Back to the Basics is about the Holy Spirit. We're going to take a look at who He is, what He does, and how He can have more influence in our lives so that we can be empowered by Him. To start things off, I'd like to ask the question, have you ever run out of gas? <clears throat> Isn't it frustrating? That vehicle that is supposed to propel us wherever we want to go won't go anywhere. It has no power if it has no gas. Do you ever feel like your spiritual gas tank is running low? Do you ever feel like you're frustrated about the Christian faith, about living as a disciple of Jesus, about resisting sin? Well, some of the symptoms of um, being low on, on spiritual energy is that sometimes we feel weak in the face of temptation. We tend to commit the same sin over and over again. Or maybe a lack of thankfulness for our salvation. There isn't much um, energy in our desire to worship the Lord and, and to live for His glory. Another symptom of an empty spiritual tank is when instead of overcoming life's challenges, we tend to feel overwhelmed by them and alone as if God had abandoned us. So these are some of the symptoms of what it's like to be running on low spiritually. And the reason this often happens is when we try to be rowboat disciples. A rowboat disciple uh, thinks that he or she has to follow Jesus on the basis of our own effort, our own energy, our own strength. We're out there, we're trying to follow Jesus, we're trying to resist sin, we're doing the best we can, but we're tired, we're frustrated, um, we're out of energy. But that's not how Jesus planned for us to follow Him. He planned for us to follow Him as sailboat disciples. In a sailboat, um, the sailor doesn't do any of the work, the wind does it. And as a follower of Jesus, we also are not the ones who do the work. It's the Holy Spirit living in us, guiding us, and uh, empowering us. And so, in this episode, what we want to see is that Jesus planned to help us have our spiritual gas tanks full. And full of what? Of whom? Of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said here in John 16, it's good that I'm going back to heaven because if I do, I'm going to send you the Counselor, that is the Holy Spirit. And, and when I send him to you, he'll be with you to keep your tank full. Here in Acts chapter 1, Jesus explains it more. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. We might be weak, but the Holy Spirit is powerful. And when he dwells in us and, and empowers us, then we're strong, not in our own strength, but in the strength of the Holy Spirit. Um, St. Paul loved to talk about the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives. He says, did you forget that God's Spirit lives in you? And he also said that we should be guided by the Holy Spirit. And in Romans, he says we should be led by the Holy Spirit. And in Ephesians, he said, don't be full of wine, but rather be full of the Holy Spirit. That is, be filled with and controlled by the Holy Spirit. So this is what we want to have happen in our, all of our lives. We want to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, led, guided by the Holy Spirit. So how can we help that grow in our lives? Well, here are some ways in which we can keep our tanks full of the Holy Spirit. And that's, first of all, by getting to know Him better. I think that of the three persons of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, often the ones that... The one that Christians know least about is the Holy Spirit. Well, let's take a few moments and let's get to know Him better so that we can be controlled and guided by Him. First of all, the Holy Spirit is, according to the Bible, the third person of the Holy Trinity. That means that the Father is a divine person, the Son is a divine person, and the Holy Spirit is a divine person. There's three divine persons, but only one God, a mystery. And so the Holy Spirit is all-knowing, like the Father and the Son. The Holy Spirit is all-powerful, like the Father and the Son. The Holy Spirit um, is, uh, knows all things. He is able to do all things. He is holy, like the Father and the Son. He's merciful, like the Father and the Son. 
the Holy Spirit. That's who he is, the third person of the Holy Trinity. We should also remember that the Holy Spirit is a real divine person, not just an impersonal force. This is important because in today's world, there are a lot of groups who say, oh, we believe in the Holy Spirit, but we think he's just an impersonal force like electricity. Well, that's not true. The Holy Spirit is a real person who wants to have a deep relationship with you and me. Here is how we know this. The Bible says the Holy Spirit can be sad. It, it says that if we commit sins of words or deeds, we make him sad. Now, an impersonal force can't be sad. And so the Holy Spirit is a divine person. Also, the Bible says the Holy Spirit can talk and send people out. In Acts chapter 13, in the city of Antioch, the Christians were gathered together, and the Bible says the Holy Spirit said, I want Barnabas and Saul to be my missionaries, and he sends them out. Electricity can't talk, but the Holy Spirit can. He is a divine person. Here's one more example. Jesus says that the Holy Spirit will teach us. Look what it says in Luke 12 there. The Holy Spirit will teach you at just the right time about what you need to say. And over in John 14, Jesus says that the Holy Spirit will remind you of important things at just the right moment. Electricity can't teach, can't remind, but the Holy Spirit can. And that's why we know that he's not an impersonal force. He is a divine being, a person who wants to have a close relationship with us. Here's another important thing to know about the Holy Spirit. He is busy. He is a key player in our salvation. Remember, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are a team. They work together for the salvation of lost souls. And the Holy Spirit is busy, busy, busy in your life and in mine. Here's some of the activities of the Holy Spirit. He um, was in charge of the inspiration of the Bible. Here in 2 Peter it says that those men who wrote the Bible uh, didn't write it of their own accord, but rather as they were guided by the Holy Spirit. And so those 40 authors who wrote those 66 books, the end result is that what they wrote is not just word, God, uh, word of man, but it is the Word of God. When we open our Bibles, we should say, thank you, Holy Spirit, for this gift, because he was responsible for the inspiration of the Bible. Here's another way in which the Holy Spirit is active. He was responsible for the conception of Jesus in the Virgin Mary. Mary had a good question. How can I get pregnant if I'm not living with a man? The angel said, don't worry about it, Mary. The Holy Spirit is going to do a miracle in you. You will become pregnant with the Son of God, the Savior of the world. You see, the Holy Spirit is all about Jesus. He wants Jesus to be glorified, to be believed in, to be lifted up, to be preached. And so here we see that the Holy Spirit was responsible for the key player in the conception of Jesus in the Virgin Mary. Here's another thing. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is responsible for the conversion of the unbeliever. According to the Bible, unbelievers can't in and of their own come to faith in Jesus. They need help. Who is that help? The Bible says no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So we, if we believe in Jesus, we should be saying, thank you, Holy Spirit, because you brought me to faith in my Savior. One more thing. The Holy Spirit is a key player also in the formation of the believer. You've heard about the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. As we see these characteristics flourishing in us, we should say, thank you, Holy Spirit, because I know this is your work in me. He also gives believers gifts that we can use in service in Jesus' kingdom. Gifts of leading, helping, teaching, evangelizing, um, encouraging, praying, showing mercy. These and many other gifts are given by the Spirit to believers so that we can use these gifts to serve our loving God um, in the kingdom of God. So the Holy Spirit not only helps people come to faith, and once we believe, he helps us grow in that faith and be used by God for his glory. What a busy, busy person, the Holy Spirit. He's a key player in our salvation. 
Here's another way to keep our tanks full of the Holy Spirit, and that is by using the means that God has provided to help us be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Here's three ideas. One is being in the Word, Bible study. That's where the Holy Spirit grabs a hold of us, gives us knowledge and wisdom. Another one is participating in the Lord's Supper. As we receive the body and blood and we're, we're renewed by Jesus' forgiveness, the Holy Spirit uses that to empower us to live lives